Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Confused about all the graphics card choices available on the market today? Feeling squeezed between all of the options? Today we have 16 graphics cards to compare in a single video. This is going to be a big one, folks. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink of choice, and let's unpack this, shall we? Well, this is a whole lot easier for you to see me and me to see you and to not knock over the tower of video card boxes, which never happened even once. In any case, this is the 4K version of this video. I've split this into three different videos because there are 60 charts total, and it would be way too much to try to put into one video. This is going to be long as it is. However, we've got 16 graphics cards here to take a look at 4K performance. Don't all laugh at once. It's not just about the 2080 Ti. I recently did a video on the $100 RX 580 in 4K gaming. I'll link that down below. So these all have a place in this video. Now I've covered all these graphics cards over the past couple of weeks and if you're interested in seeing those those will be linked down below but they're not all in one video and you'd have to open up like six different videos to try to piece together all of the results. Dollar cost per frame per second across all 16 cards. Percentage difference between all 16 cards starting at the RX 580 to show how much improvement at 4k all of these cards are over that as a baseline. So there's a lot to unpack in this video. Today's video is sponsored by Recover It Data Recovery. This is a free tool that you can download to recover all kinds of data. Files simply deleted, files in your trash, formatted drives, partitions destroyed, and complete device recovery. For example, let's say you accidentally format an SD card that has important pictures or video that you just filmed. Not to worry, this software will take care of it. No matter what you lost, just recover it. Graphics, documents, video, other files, emails, audio, and more. High success rate recovery on any kind of device. Download Recover It Free Edition using the link in the video description below to try it out on your own computer, hard drives, external devices, a recycle bin, or even a completely crashed computer. Recover It is completely free to use for the first 100 megabytes of data, and as you can see here, you can select all your drives and folders for where your lost data may be and restore from there. If you need more than 100 megabytes of data recovery, I recommend Recover It Ultimate. For $69, you get a lifetime license and updates for one PC and bootable media. If your computer will not boot or you have important data on your C drive, shut it down and restore your data from bootable media to make sure that it's not overwritten by Windows. And now, back to the video. Linked in the video description below, you will find the 1080p and 1440p versions of this video. The comments are different in those. The charts are different, but also my conclusions at the end. After we've gone through the charts, which we'll get to fairly quickly here, I will go through and break these down in terms of price point and put a few on the desk and talk about what games they play, where they fit within the market, who should consider buying them. And I'll mention a few of the cards which aren't here on the desk, either because they're not part of the test suite or because they haven't launched yet. We'll talk about those later after we get to the results. Our test bench configuration today is the Intel i9-9900K at 5 gigahertz fixed on all cores and threads. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 4000 CL19 provided by Patriot, very good memory, Samsung 970 Pro boot drive, and an Intel 2TB 660p NVMe SSD, which is what all the games were installed on that we benchmark. I've reviewed that before. It's an absolutely amazing drive. There will be a ton of links down in the video description below, including to Patreon, which has all 60 charts from all three videos, not only early access, but simply posted as images. So if you'd like to see the images, not in video format, but just easily browsable, consider joining us over on Patreon, becoming a patron and a supporter of the channel, and you can get access to a lot of things like charts separate from the video and early access. There's Floatplane down there. If you want to see the videos early, this video was up at least a week early on Floatplane. Thank you, Floatplane subs, if you're watching this early on Floatplane. There's a link to that down below. $5 a month, no ads, early access, higher quality, wonderful. It directly supports the channel. You can also join us as a YouTube member or subscribe to either myself or my wife on Twitch down below if you want to support the channel or use the links to all this stuff down to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay. They are affiliate links. They support the channel. 
We do get product samples, but I have to buy a lot of stuff. After the benchmark charts, I'll go through all these and let you know which were product samples and which I had to pay for because all the money we receive is direct support from the viewers. All the money from Floatplane, Patreon, uh, YouTube, and from Twitch goes directly into buying this stuff to help us make content for you. And with that being said, let's take a look at the benchmarks. Remember to stick around to the end where I break all these down into segments and talk about who should buy them and which ones I think are really the deal. First up, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, this generation's crisis. If it can run Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it can probably run anything. On the screen, I am showing you the two most powerful cards from each company. The Radeon 7 on the left, which isn't really a deal at lower resolutions, but is faster than the 5700 XT at 4K. And then on the right, we have the Beast, the RTX 2080 Ti for the low, low price of only an arm and a leg. If you look at the real-time performance numbers, you will see that the Radeon 7 is simply no competitor to the 2080 Ti, but it's the best they've got, and so I'm putting it on the screen. I'll show you different variations of different cards as we go through this video. Notice that at very high detail, not ultra, there is a detail step above this, at very high, the RTX 2080 Ti is just bouncing around 60 frames per second. And this is not a new game. It's been out for over a year now, actually. Of course, it's also Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so there's that. 63 frames per second average on the 2080 Ti, 46 frames per second average on the Radeon 7, 41 on the 5700 XT. Now, yes, you could lower this to medium detail. Yes, you could turn off shadows and turn off clouds, and you could get playable performance out of a 5700 XT. That might actually be an interesting topic for a future video, which is what does it take to run at 4K or what does it take to run at 1440p since I think 1440p is more common. The interesting thing is an RTX 2080 Super is pretty close, 53 frames per second. That's 10 slower than a 2080 Ti. If, if you want to go 4K, you could lower this to high and then turn clouds and shadows to medium and you'd actually probably get 60 frames per second out of it, but it would be lower in the minimums. That's just an average. Speaking of the minimums, 46 on the 2080 Ti, 40 on the 2080 Super, 28 on the Radeon 7. If you want to play 4K, it takes like all the money, at least for this game. Dollar cost per frame per second, the 2080 Ti is not a deal. But again, if you want to play at 60 frames per second in games like this at 4K, you kind of don't have a lot of choices. It gets pretty brutal pretty fast. The 2080 Super is a better value, and if you can compromise on your detail settings, it's frankly going to give you more frames for less money. It's a substantial price drop, $400 less expensive than a 2080 Ti. Notice the Radeon 7 is not actually a deal at all. The RX 5700 XT is phenomenally better, and of course, if you want to play at medium, you can make it work. Otherwise, get yourself a 2080 Super. Percentage difference, the 2080 Ti is nearly three times faster than an RX 580, which means very little at 4K, but it is for those of you curious. About two and a half times faster for a 2080 Super, and notice that both of those are substantially faster than anything AMD offers. Far Cry New Dawn. Interestingly enough, another Ubisoft game, but it runs much better than Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Take a look at this. We have on the left side an RX 5700 XT, and on the right side an RTX 2080 Super. Now, I know the prices of these cards are not the same. In fact, they're quite different. $400 on the left, $700 on the right. Now, if you look at the performance, of course the RTX 2080 Super wins. That should not surprise anybody. However, the 5700 XT is holding its own surprisingly well. This is ultra, not high, but ultra. And so to actually play this game, I strongly encourage you to set it to high detail. Ultra is for screenshots and benchmarks and high detail is for gaming. But since live combat tends to be slower than benchmarks, I've switched to using ultra here because it sort of shows you the worst case scenario. And while the 5700 XT is not above 60 frames per second throughout all of this, it isn't terribly far off for $400. Of course, if you want ultra detail at 4K, you got to spend more money. 67 frames per second average on a 2080 Super, 
56 frames per second average on a 5700 XT. But since that 5700 XT is 400 and the 2080 Super is 700, I think you already know what the dollar cost per frame per second chart is going to say. Now a 2080 Ti blows it away here at 84 frames per second. And if you want any kind of future at all in games, get a 2080 Ti if you have the money. I do think it's interesting. Far Cry New Dawn, being the newest Far Cry game at Ultra Detail, is remarkably playable on a variety. Of, even if you had a Vegas 64 or a 2060 Super, you could make this work with a few modifications to detail settings. If you want to maintain over 60 frames per second consistently, however, again, there's no only one choice, an RTX 2080 Ti, although a 2080 Super would do it at high detail most of the time. Dollar cost per frame per second, $7 per frame on the 5700 XT versus $10.45 seconds per frame per second on the 2080 Super. It is faster, but you are paying a premium to get it. It's worth noting that the 2070 Super here is actually a pretty reasonable deal. It's a little bit more expensive. It's in between, but it's $500 instead of $700 and you can kind of tweak the details around. 1440p is so much easier to run than 4K. This is just crushing to all of these GPUs. And we finally have a card that is exactly 3x the performance of the RX 580. For only $1,100, you too can get three times an RX 580's performance. This just goes to show you how much of a price premium you pay, because even at new prices, even if you count the RX 580 at 200 instead of 100, you're paying five and a half times the money for three times the performance. That's a substantial price premium. If you're okay to pay it, you want the best, then rock on. 2080 Ti is awesome. I have one in my own workstation at the office. It's great, but boy, is it expensive, and I acknowledge that most people are not buying that. 4K gaming in modern games is a hard and challenging thing to do, and I'll have a lot to say about this after the benchmarks. I hope you guys all stick around because I, frankly, go into an extended conversation about this and comparing, say, a used GTX 1080 Ti to a new 2080 Ti and the options. We have the 5700 XT on the left here in Gears 5, and we have a 2080 Ti on the right in Gears 5. Yeah, what can I say? As much as the 2080 Ti costs, if you want to play at 4K, your options are limited if you want to play new games. Of course, if you're playing Fortnite and Overwatch, then you don't need these. But man, oh man, oh man, that is just painful. And of course, if you're going to turn the detail down to low to make a 5700 XT playable, why are you playing at 4K? Set it to 1440p and turn it up to high. 4K low is not really better, in my opinion, than 1440p high. Let's take a look at the benchmark chart. Shall we? 62 frames per second average on the $1,100 Gaming King versus 41 frames per second on the $400 Value King. Almost three times the money for only 50% more performance. The 2080 Ti is not a deal compared to that 5700 XT. There's no world in which you can say it's the Value King, it's the Performance King. Well, it's Performance King. 50% more performance for almost three times more money is just a horrifically bad deal, but it's really cool and really amazing and really awesome. 4K is hard. Looking at the dollar cost per frame per second chart, something interesting happens. A 2080 Super is not a ridiculous value for the money, at least compared to the other NVIDIA offerings. Take a look at the $400 RTX 2060 Super. Yes, to be sure, $11 to $14 per frame per second is more expensive, but once you put it in a nice gaming PC, those kind of average out. And if you're building a nice 4K machine, those are close enough, get a 2080 Super. The 2080 Ti is just really, really expensive for what it gives you. There's just, frankly, that's for people who just can ignore the price. The 5700 XT is by far the better value, and here, compared to a 2060 Super, is definitely the value king. Again, the 2080 Ti is three times the performance of a 580. Notice the 5700 XT is almost double the performance compared to a 2060 Super, which is at 171. You gotta jump up to a 2070 Super for 100 bucks more to beat the 5700 XT. The 2080 Super actually does pretty well here. 
Ghost Recon Wildlands. I'm going to talk about uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint in a minute, but Ghost Recon Wildlands is an interesting one because it's not new. It's been out for a couple of years now. I have beaten this game, played all the way through it. I did it on my i7 8700K, 6 core 12 thread chip with a GTX 1080 Ti. Great performance, lots of fun, not a problem. I stream some of it. I've made videos about it. It's very nice. Breakpoint not so much, but we'll talk about that when we get to the conclusion at the end. I've chosen different cards here, however. An RTX 2070 Super on the right and the 5700 XT on the left. Now, neither one of these are at 60 frames per second, but we are at very high detail. Lower to high, and it becomes tolerable. Maybe lower shadows and a few other things to medium, and you can get 60 frames per second out of it. But again, this game is several years old now, which demonstrates that if you want to play older games, you can go cheaper. But if you want to play brand new games, well... Yeah, we've got 53 frames per second average on the 2070 Super versus 50 on the 5700 XT. Those two cards are very, very comparable. You're basically paying a 20% price premium to get the NVIDIA features, ray tracing, tensor cores, and the better NVENC uh, video encoder. And you're getting slightly better performance. Here you're getting a couple of percentage points faster, but they really are neck and neck. That's a personal choice but that's what you've got. A 2080 Super will do nearly 60 frames per second, and yet yeah, there's the 2080 Ti sticking its neck out in front again. This is not a new game, but even the 2080 Ti cannot have a minimum of 60 plus frames per second at very high detail. Ouch. Another dollar cost per frame per second chart. You can certainly pause this and look at it in more detail. What could we say? The more you spend, the more you spend. And another percentage difference chart. If I had these charts to do over again, I probably would have set the baseline differently because an RX 580 doesn't mean much at 4K for the games that I'm showing you in this video. But when I sat down to make them, I wanted to make all three videos worth of charts the same. So here you go. Now we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I've done something a bit different here. The RTX 2070 Super is on the left and the RTX 2080 Ti is on the right. There's really no AMD card to buy for 4K gaming in this game. There, there just really isn't. I'll show you the chart here in a second. But if you want remotely acceptable 4K performance, you have NVIDIA to pick from, and then you have NVIDIA to pick from. It is worth noting that RTX and DLSS are turned on, which is helping this performance. Without DS DLSS, this would be frankly even worse. And even the 2080 Ti would struggle at 4K to get 60 frames per second. Welcome to modern high-performance games or low-performance games or whatever they are. 87 frames per second on the 2080 Ti, 61 frames per second on the 2070 Super. Thanks to DLSS, which, yes, I understand it's a bit of a downscale on parts of it and then an upscale and a filter and whatnot, but it does allow 60 frames per second at the highest detail at 4K in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, whereas the RX 5700 XT does 40. That's a fairly substantial difference. What about the minimum frame rates? Well, the 2070 Super doesn't quite get there, but it's pretty close. The 2080 Super is at 60 and the 2080 Ti is at 75. And the RX 5700 XT is at 33, which is why I did not show it to you. Dollar cost per frame per second? Actually, the 2080 Super is not a bad deal here. Yes, it is almost 20% more expensive than the 2070 Super on a per frame per second, but if you want playable performance, maybe it's worth the extra $200. That's a personal choice you'll have to make. The 2080 Ti is, of course, still expensive, but not tremendously so, not as much as in the other comparisons. The extra features of that card really help it make some kind of sense here. Finally, thanks to RTX and DLSS, the 2080 Ti is more than four times faster than an RX 580 for new price to new price five and a half times. That's actually pretty reasonable, and if you're building a premium machine, that's pretty nice. This is probably why NVIDIA put DLSS, the Tensor Cores, the RT Cores, and the new features in, is because going forward, in order to continue substantially improving performance, they're going to have to sort of move to some new technologies, because traditional rasterization may very well have reached the end of its large improvement cycles, and so they've added new features going forward. Thank you all for sticking around to the end of the benchmark charts. You all get a gold star. It is greatly appreciated. Now I'm going to clear these off the desk and we're going to go through these group by group. 
Our first four cards I want to talk about are the four used cards, or at least at the moment in the United States, I would buy all of these used. Their used prices are good, their new prices are not. We have the RX 580 and 590, we have the Vega 56, and we have the Vega 64. These are all worth considering, believe it or not, even at 4K, even the RX 580. The RX 580 for $100 might seem like the worst 4K gaming card of all, except I recently did a video showing multiple games being played at 4K without a problem. They're not Shadow of the Tomb Raider, spoiler alert, but Grand Theft Auto V is remarkably playable on it. You will also find that if you play if your kids want to play The Sims 4, if you want to play Minecraft, if you want to play League of Legends, CSGO, and you don't need 300 frames per second, I understand competitive players, this is not a terrible card. Now, in all seriousness, as much fun as that video was to put together, do I legitimately recommend this as a 4K card? No, of course not. It's not at all what you should buy for 4K if you have any kind of money and you want to have any future whatsoever, but it will do it. The 590 costs too much. They're $50 more at the moment. It just makes no sense. The Vegas are interesting with their high-speed HBM2 memory as opposed to GDDR and the fact that they have more horsepower. They're not a terrible 4K choice if you don't want to play the latest and greatest games. If you want to play the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 or Watch Dogs Legion, or if you want to play the just-released Ghost uh, Recon Breakpoint, no, come on. You need much more if you want to play those at 4K. Spoiler alert, you need a 2080 Ti. We'll get to that in a minute. But if you play slightly older games, slightly more casual games, and you're not so demanding to play every latest pretty big budget title, a Vega 64 legitimately will play a lot of stuff at 4K, and you can buy one of these used at the moment for about $300. $300 buys you an RX 5700 almost, or a RTX 2060 almost, and those are not 4K cards. I'm trying to find a justification for, in truth, you really have got to spend more money than that. The, the real deal here is the RX 580. Leaving the used cards behind, that brings us to the new cards, the GTX 1660 and 1660 Ti. No, the Supers aren't here because they didn't exist when I made this video. I know Super versions of these are, NVIDIA, why? The Super versions of these cards are coming, it's ridiculous, but whatever. It doesn't make any, they're not gonna change the performance by enough to matter. They're stacked too closely with all their various siblings above and below them. If you, find the numbers on the RX 580 and 590 interesting, but you don't want a used card, fine. Spend $220 and get a 1660. It's not meant to be a 4K card. It doesn't have fast enough memory. In fact, for 4K, the faster memory on the TI kind of almost makes sense, but then you might as well buy an RTX 2060 because there's only a 30 or $40 price. These make no sense to buy new for 4K gaming, let's be honest. Stepping up a bit to the mainstream cards at three to $400. Yes, I know, I explained all this in detail in the previous two videos, 1080p and 1440p, so I won't do it again here. I will just say, don't buy the non-XT or the non-Super card. If you genuinely wanna play at 4K, you're gonna want the eight gigabytes of VRAM here or the extra performance on the XT card. Which one you buy is a personal preference. Do you want your, oh, I don't know, see, do you want your Ferrari or your Lamborghini? I mean, they're both amazing in terms of what they can do. Not at 4K, but they're both amazing. They're very, very close in performance. Not the right choice for 4K in my opinion, but if, if 400 is all you've got and you want a new card and you want the best possible experience you can get and you want to be able to play some new games, they will do it, but you're going to have to be real. You're going to have to be very flexible with detail settings. You're going to have to be willing to go, well, you know what? Medium's fine. I'll tweak this. I'll set render resolution to 80% or 75% instead of 100%. Play at 1440p. 4K is an expensive place to be for anything other than casual games. Now, if you're playing World of Tanks and World of Warships and League of Legends and CSGO, okay, fine. But you really don't need a $400 card to do that. You can do that on, I mean, Overwatch does not need a $400 card to play at 4K, as I have shown in previous videos. These kind of don't make a lot of sense because you're either going super budget or just go big. Better yet, don't have a 4K monitor for budget gaming to be completely, totally, honestly blunt. 
AMD's Radeon 7 with 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. What an interesting card. I did a whole video on it. Yeah, at the current price of $700, this makes no sense. Yes, the VRAM would seem to indicate, well, wow, with that much VRAM and that much performance, it's got a great future ahead of it. Well, yes and no. The problem is that it's not really a gaming card. It's a compute card. It's an instinct card that failed validations and certification, and they just turned into a gaming card because it beat the heck out of throwing it away. But in terms of actual gaming, yeah, no. Unless you find this for like $350, it's a hard pass. Do you want to play all current AAA games at 4K, high detail, 60 frames per second or better? Well, Allow me to introduce you to your new video card. It's called the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. It'll just cost you an arm, a leg, and a second mortgage. Don't yell at the messenger. I didn't set the prices. I don't control the market. You can either blame NVIDIA or AMD as you choose. NVIDIA for charging more because they can, or AMD for not having any competition here. At this level of performance, there's nothing else to buy but NVIDIA, and so they charge for the privilege. Between the time this video was set up and the benchmarks were done and the charts were made, and I'm recording this part here, because there is a time gap, I don't make these videos in one day, I have played about eight hours of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Putting aside whether you like that game or not, because some people are happy with it and some people aren't, you're looking at like 70, maybe 75 frames per second on average with dips, the 1% lows are well south of 60 frames per second, on an RTX 2080 Ti with an i9-9900K at five gigahertz. That's at high detail. That is not at very high, and that is not at ultra. That is at the me effectively the medium, because de there's low, medium, high, very high, and ultra. So high is actually the medium detail setting. Turn it to ultra, and it goes south of 60 frames per second in a big, big hurry. So if you're thinking that you can get away with 4K gaming in the latest and greatest games with a $500 2070 Super, allow me to dissuade you of that thought. Now, if you turn the detail down to medium, you can, but what are you playing 4K for if you have to turn it down to medium? Play at 1440p or 70% or render resolution and get yourself some decent graphics quality, decent performance. A 2080 Super will also not do it either. It's going to be below 60 frames per second. Here's the unfortunate thing. If you come to me right now and you say, hey tech, I got a question for you. Yes, what's your question? And you say, well, I want to play at 4K. I want to play at high detail. I'm okay with 60 frames per second, but I want a card to last me for three years. What do I buy? To which I would say, nothing. That doesn't exist. If you want to play the latest and great greatest AAA games at 4K, high detail, 60 plus frames per second, and you want to keep doing it for the next three years, you want to play Cyberpunk 2077, Watch Dogs Legions, and all the new awesome games coming out for the next three years, congratulations, you are going to be buying whatever is the best card available every year. Case in point. The last great card, the 1080 Ti, now there was a larger gap, it was a bit weird because of the transition they had, but the 30 series is coming out in a year, so we're not going to be getting quite as long of a gap this time around. The 1080 Ti, as nice, not this one, but the previous one, the, the previous GTX 1080 Ti, will not do 60 frames per second in Ghost Recon Breakpoint at high detail consistently. It will occasionally when not a lot's going on. Go invade one of the bases that has 35 enemies running around? I can speak from experience, it's not going to do it. Because my computer at home, which has a 4K monitor on it, has a 1080 Ti on it. And it doesn't do 60 frames per second consistently when engaging bases and engaging 35 enemies in a big... It does running in the wilderness doing nothing, driving around. But it doesn't in major combat. So, yeah, if that's your goal, 4K, AAA, is expensive. Expensive. It is rarefied air to maintain. It is so much easier to do at 1440p than it is at 4K. Quick note, 1080p is 2 million pixels. 1440p is 3.6 million pixels, not double of 1080p. But 4K is 8.3 million pixels. It is four times the pixel count of 1080p. It is tremendously difficult to do in the latest, greatest, splashy games. Whether you want to run them or not is a separate conversation, but it's really, really hard to do. 
Ironically, this says nothing about the high refresh rate 4K monitors. Those have started dropping in price. They launched for over two grand, uh, what, a year ago? Right now on Amazon, $1,400, which sounds like a lot, but if you're buying $1,100 video cards, it really isn't. $1,400 buys you a 27 inch 4K, 144 Hertz IPS G-Sync Super Duper monitor from Asus. This thing barely runs at 60 frames per second. How in the world are you gonna run these games at 144 frames per second at 4K? Yes, you can buy two of them and NV link them, and if you're buying $1,400 monitors, maybe you would, although frankly, SLI is not that great, but I guess if you have a 144 hertz 4K monitor, it's for you know Overwatch and um, competitive online shooters and Fortnite, I suppose, but uh, how many of you are spending that kind of money to play Fortnite at 4K at 144 hertz? Maybe you are. This is rarefied air, it really is. 4K gaming, a summary. Which four cards would I buy if I wanted to play games at 4K? Well, as I just got done saying in extremely ridiculously long detail, if you want to play all the latest wonderful games, you have only one choice. It's the only thing that will do it. A compromised choice would be a used GTX 1080 Ti, which I have not done recent testing on, so I can't show you a side by side on that in the performance graphs. I will. I will circle back around and do all the 10 series and probably all the 900 series and do a, a refresh comparison, but I don't have that here to show you today. If $1,100 makes you cry, and if your wife is going to throw you out of the house if you buy one, maybe a $700 uh, 2080 Super you can get by with. You're looking at roughly uh, GTX 1080 Ti performance. Actually, it's better than a 1080 Ti, except for the lack of VRAM. It's got eight instead of 11, but it's, it's a good card, and if you want a new card, it's worth considering. On the other hand, if you couldn't care less about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, if you think Cyberpunk 2077 sounds like rap music, if you're just not interested, but you want to play World of Tanks, and you want to play uh, Overwatch, and you want to play Rainbow Six Siege and Fortnite, if you want to play the non-AAA stuff, but you want to play them at 4K, allow me to introduce you to the $400 cards of the 2060 Super or the Navi, the RX 5700 XT. They're not ideal, and they're overkill for some of those games. A Rainbow Six Siege actually doesn't need these for 4K gaming unless you want 150 to 200 frames per second. But it's amazing what they'll do, and they'll give you some longevity in those types of titles if 4K is important to you. Something to consider. So this is, yes, you can buy an RX 580 for 100 bucks. I did a video on that, but that was more to show you what was possible rather than to encourage you to all go do it. Thank you for getting to this point of the video. Double gold stars for all of you. It is greatly appreciated. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions. I'm sure there'll be a lot of them. That's what the comment section is for. Links in the video description, links to support the channel, which I talked about earlier. Well, affiliate links to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay to all this stuff will be down there. Using those supports the channel at no extra cost to you. It's greatly appreciated. Come say hello on Twitter or on Discord. Those links are down down below as well. Thank you all so much for watching and sitting through this video. It's greatly appreciated and I will see all of you next time.